Pharaoh, U.S. also, Coptic, Pro, is the common title of the monarchs of ancient Egypt from the First Dynasty c. 3150 BCE until the annexation of Egypt by the Roman Empire in 30 BCE, although the actual term, Pharaoh, was not used contemporaneously for a ruler until Merneptah, c. 1200 BCE. In the early dynasty, ancient Egyptian kings used to have up to three titles, the Horus, the Sedge and B -tj name, and the two ladies -tj name. The Golden Horus and Nomen and Prenomen titles were later added. In Egyptian society, religion was central to everyday life. One of the roles of the pharaoh was as an intermediary between the gods and the people. The pharaoh thus deputized for the gods, his role was both as civil and religious administrator. He owned all of the land in Egypt, enacted laws, collected taxes, and defended Egypt from invaders as the commander-in-chief of the army. Religiously, the pharaoh officiated over religious ceremonies and chose the sites of new temples. He was responsible for maintaining mayat MT, or cosmic order, balance, and justice, and part of this included going to war when necessary to defend the country or attacking others when it was believed that this would contribute to mayat, such as to obtain resources. During the early days prior to the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt, the Deshrit or the Red Crown was a representation of the Kingdom of Lower Egypt, while the Hedjet, the White Crown, was worn by the kings of the Kingdom of Upper Egypt. After the unification of both kingdoms into one united Egypt, the Pieschent, the combination of both the red and white crowns was the official crown of kings. With time new headdresses were introduced during different dynasties like the Khat, Nimes, Atef, Hemhem crown, and Kepresh. At times, it was depicted that a combination of these headdresses or crowns would be worn together. Etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> The word pharaoh ultimately derives from the Egyptian compound pr, pa, -a, great house, written with the two biliteral hieroglyphs pr, house, and column, here meaning great or high. It was used only in larger phrases such as smr pr, courtier of the high house, with specific reference to the buildings of the court or palace. From the 12th dynasty onward, the word appears in a wish formula. Great house, may it live, prosper, and be in health. But again, only with reference to the royal palace and not the person. During the reign of Thutmose III, c. 1479 to 1425 BCE, in the New Kingdom, after the foreign rule of the Hyksos during the Second Intermediate Period, Pharaoh became the form of address for a person who was king. The earliest instance where PR is used specifically to address the ruler is in a letter to Akhenaten, who reigned c. 1353 to 1336 BCE, which is addressed to Great House, may it live, prosper, and be in health. During the 18th dynasty 16th to 14th centuries BCE, the title pharaoh was employed as a reverential designation of the ruler. About the late 21st dynasty 10th century BCE, however, instead of being used alone as before, it began to be added to the other titles before the ruler's name, and from the 25th dynasty 8th to 7th centuries BCE, it was, at least in ordinary usage, the only epithet prefixed to the royal appellative. From the 19th dynasty onward PR on its own was used as regularly as him. Majesty. The term, therefore, evolved from a word specifically referring to a building to a respectful designation for the ruler, particularly by the 22nd dynasty and 23rd dynasty. For instance, the first dated appearance of the title pharaoh being attached to a ruler's name occurs in year 17 of Siamon on a fragment from the Karnak priestly annals. Here, an induction of an individual to the Amun priesthood is dated specifically to the reign of pharaoh Siamon. This new practice was continued under his successor Susens II and the 22nd dynasty kings. For instance, the large Dakla Stella is specifically dated to year 5 of King Pharaoh Shashank, beloved of Amun, whom all Egyptologists concur was Shashank I, the founder of the 22nd dynasty, including Alan Gardiner in his original 1933 publication of this stella. Shashank I was the second successor of Siamon. Meanwhile, the old custom of referring to the sovereign simply as PR3 continued in traditional Egyptian narratives. By this time, the late Egyptian word is reconstructed to have been pronounced asterisk paro, whence Herodotus derived the name of one of the Egyptian kings, Koine Greek. 
Fer. In the Hebrew Bible, the title also occurs as Hebrew, per paro h, from that, in the Septuagint, coin Greek, pharaoh translate. Pharaoh, and then in late Latin pharaoh, both end stem nouns. The Quran likewise spells it Arabic, frown fur on with n here, always referring to the one evil king in the book of Exodus story, by contrast to the good king Aziz in Surah Yusuf's story. The Arabic combines the original ayan from Egyptian along with the n ending from Greek. In English, it was at first spelled Pharaoh, but the translators of the King James Bible revived Pharaoh with H from the Hebrew. Meanwhile in Egypt itself, asterisk par o evolved into Sahidic Coptic, pro and then arero by mistaking p as the definite article, the, from ancient Egyptian p. Other notable epithets are nswt, translated to, king, jty for, monarch or sovereign, nb for, lord, and hq for, ruler. List of pharaohs Topic Regalia Topic Scepters and Staves Scepters and staves were a general sign of authority in ancient Egypt. One of the earliest royal scepters was discovered in the tomb of Kasekemwi in Abydos. Kings were also known to carry a staff, and Pharaoh Anejib is shown on stone vessels carrying a so-called MKS staff. The scepter with the longest history seems to be the HEQA scepter, sometimes described as the shepherd's crook. The earliest examples of this piece of regalia dates to prehistoric Egypt. A scepter was found in a tomb at Abydos that dates to Nakeda III. Another scepter associated with the king is the was scepter. This is a long staff mounted with an animal head. The earliest known depictions of the was scepter date to the first dynasty. The was scepter is shown in the hands of both kings and deities. The flail later was closely related to the HEQA scepter, the crook and flail, but in early representations the king was also depicted solely with the flail, as shown in a late pre-dynastic knife handle which is now in the Metropolitan Museum, and on the Narmer macehead. The Uraeus The earliest evidence known of the Uraeus—a rearing cobra—is from the reign of Den from the First Dynasty. The cobra supposedly protected the pharaoh by spitting fire at its enemies. <laughs> Crowns and headdresses Dishrit The red crown of Lower Egypt, the Dishrit crown, dates back to pre-dynastic times and symbolized chief ruler. A red crown has been found on a pottery shard from Nakeda, and later, Narmer is shown wearing the red crown on both the Narmer macehead and the Narmer palette. Headjet The white crown of Upper Egypt, the headjet, was worn in the predynastic period by Scorpion II, and, later, by Narmer. Piaschent This is the combination of the Dishrit and headjet crowns into a double crown, called the Piaschent crown. It is first documented in the middle of the First Dynasty. The earliest depiction may date to the reign of Djet, and is otherwise surely attested during the reign of Den. Cot The cot headdress consists of a kind of kerchief, whose end is tied similarly to a ponytail. The earliest depictions of the cot headdress comes from the reign of Den, but is not found again until the reign of Djoser. Nemes The Nemes headdress dates from the time of Djoser. It is the most common type of crown that has been depicted throughout Pharaonic Egypt. Any other type of crown, apart from the cot headdress, has been commonly depicted on top of the Nemes. The statue from his Sirdab in Saqqara shows the king wearing the Nemes headdress.
Topic: Atef. Osiris is shown to wear the Atef crown, which is an elaborate headjet with feathers and discs. Depictions of pharaohs wearing the Atef crown originate from the Old Kingdom. Topic: <laughs> Hemham. The Hemham crown is usually depicted on top of Nimes, Pieschent, or De Schrit crowns. It is an ornate triple Atef with corkscrew sheep horns and usually two Urai. The usage depiction of this crown begins during the early 18th dynasty of Egypt. Topic: <laughs> Kepresh. Also called the blue crown, the Kepresh crown has been depicted since the New Kingdom. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Physical evidence. Egyptologist Bob Breyer has noted that despite their widespread depiction in royal portraits, no ancient Egyptian crown has ever been discovered. Tutankhamun's tomb, discovered largely intact, did contain such regalia as his crook and flail, but no crown was found among the funerary equipment. Diadems have been discovered, it is presumed that crowns would have been believed to have magical properties. Breyer's speculation is that crowns were religious or state items, so a dead pharaoh likely could not retain a crown as a personal possession. The crowns may have been passed along to the successor. Topic. Titles During the early dynastic period kings had three titles. The Horus name is the oldest and dates to the late pre-dynastic period. The Nesu Biti name was added during the first dynasty. The Nibiti name was first introduced toward the end of the first dynasty. The Golden Falcon Bic NBW name is not well understood. The prenomen and nomen were introduced later and are traditionally enclosed in a cartouche. By the Middle Kingdom, the official titulary of the ruler consisted of five names, Horus, Nibati, Golden Horus, Nomen, and prenomen for some rulers, only one or two of them may be known. <laughs> Nesu Biti name The Nesu Biti name, also known as Prenomen, was one of the new developments from the reign of Den. The name would follow the glyphs for the Sedge and the Bee. The title is usually translated as King of Upper and Lower Egypt. The Nsw Biti name may have been the birth name of the king. It was often the name by which kings were recorded in the later annals and king lists. Horus name The Horus name was adopted by the king, when taking the throne. The name was written within a square frame representing the palace, named a Sarek. The earliest known example of a Sarek dates to the reign of King Ka, before the First Dynasty. The Horus name of several early kings expresses a relationship with Horus. Aha refers to Horus the fighter. Djer refers to Horus the strong, etc. Later kings express ideals of kingship in their Horus names. Kasekemwi refers to Horus, the two powers are at peace, while Nebra refers to Horus, Lord of the Sun. <laughs> Nibati name The earliest example of a Nibati name comes from the reign of King Aha from the First Dynasty. The title links the king with the goddesses of Upper and Lower Egypt Nekbet and Wadjet. The title is preceded by the vulture and the cobra standing on a basket the Neb sign. <laughs> Golden Horus The Golden Horus or Golden Falcon name was preceded by a falcon on a gold or NBW sign. The title may have represented the divine status of the king. The Horus associated with gold may be referring to the idea that the bodies of the deities were made of gold and the pyramids and obelisks are representations of golden sun rays. The gold sign may also be a reference to Nubt, the city of Set. This would suggest that the iconography represents Horus conquering Set. Topic: 
Nomen and prenomen The prenomen and nomen were contained in a cartouche. The prenomen often followed the king of Upper and Lower Egypt or Lord of the Two Lands title. The prenomen often incorporated the name of Re. The nomen often followed the title Son of Re or the title Lord of Appearances See also List of pharaohs Coronation of the pharaoh Great royal wife, the chief wife of a male pharaoh Egyptian chronology Pharaohs in the Bible Notes <laughs>